good morning. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, who has considered the heavens, the works of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained. What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you've considered him? You have made him a little lower than the angels. God, we just worship you this morning. I thank you for this beautiful day, God. Indeed, I will say this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, no matter what happened in the night, sorrow may come in the night, but joy comes in the morning. Father, you are our faithful friend, the friend that sticks closer than a brother. I love that you are just our father. You are just our savior. You aren't just Elohim creator, but you are friend. I am the friend of God. He calls me friend. And we sing that worship song and it just blows my mind. And I guess that's on my heart, Lord, because Tim was one of Chuck's very best friends and you befriended Timmy when he got saved and he got so close to you and he fell in love with you. And then just like with any good thing, when a friend find something good, whether it's a good, you know, uh, Thai tea location, boba tea, or whether it's a yummy dessert place or food place or restaurant or whatever, whatever it might be, website even these days, blog, podcast, we share things with our friends because they're our friends. And what we enjoy, we want our friends to enjoy. And that's what Timmy did for Chuck, Lord. Timmy Kruger, my beautiful friend that I grew up with, middle school and high school, was in our wedding, led Chuck to the Lord, our friend, Tim Kruger. He shared Jesus with Chuck. And because of that, Lord, so much of our life trajectory changed. Chuck could have been a skater dude that never went to college, that never went to sleep with peace, not having to run from the police. You provided through the mouthpiece of Tim a new life for Chuck through you, Jesus. You used our brother, Tim, who we're gonna celebrate his life today. You used him to share the gospel with Chuck and with so many other people. And you used Chuck to encourage Tim when he was dying of cancer through text messages, through over the phone prayers, through in-person prayers, through middle of the night groanings, fasting. You used my husband, God. I'm so incredibly thankful, Father. Cancer is a horrible, horrible disease and it's ripped apart so many families God but I know that cancer is not the end for Tim I know that he's in heaven I know that my Redeemer lives and I know Jesus just like you told Martha I am the resurrection and the life and she said I believe and so father we do believe in you we trust in you we hope in you we rest in you we cling to you we feed ourselves upon you you're the bread of life we drink from you you're the living water you're the ancient of days I just I think of that verse in Isaiah, I see the Lord seated on the throne, even as I'm driving on my way to court. I see the Lord seated on the throne, exalted, and the train of his robe fills the temple with glory. And the whole earth is filled with his glory. Lord, your earth is filled with your glory. It's supposed to be in the 90s today in Southern California, and it's hot. And our bodies can only tolerate so much sunshine. We get hot, we get dehydrated, we start getting sunburn, our skin can't handle it, our organs can't handle it, we get a headache, sunstroke is very real. Some people even vomit from too much sun. And that's just a, a smidgen of a picture of what your glory is like. We can't look at your glory, we'll be consumed. You told Moses, sure, you can see my glory, just my back. I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock and my glory will pass by and you'll just see my back. Because if Moses saw you in your, the full radiance of your glory, your Shekinah glory, you would have died. And you didn't want him to die. You wanted him to live, continue to be your mouthpiece, to be your, the leader after your own heart, God. And so, Father, we just stand in awe of you when we think on these things, what is true and noble and lovely, the truth. When we think on the truth, all of the other troubles pass away. 
thank you God for Easter thank you that you are the resurrection and the life and father I just pray a blessing over Tim's celebration of life service today God when the friends and family gather and our good friend Richard Mulder will be talking about you Jesus will be sharing the gospel I just ask father that hearts would be churned and turned and there would be today would be a day of repentance and salvation for many God that they would say wow I thought Tim was just a real estate photographer. I thought Tim was just a husband to Jessica and a dad to Henry and Holt. I didn't realize he was a man of such strong faith. Maybe some knew, but some didn't know. And that's how it is at a celebration of life. No, no one person knows everything about a loved one. So God, I just pray that the name of Jesus would be exalted in our lives, would be exalted in our walks, would be exalted on our social media posts, would be exalted and even how we dress how we carry ourselves how we share with the needy how we give how we pray with people how we love on people may your name be exalted today at tim's service father be with amy as she's going to arizona or she may be there already to minister to her grandmother who's very ill with dementia and sundowner syndrome god and you know all about it lord you know every detail father you've allowed Amy's grandmother to live past 95. Tim was only 42. My friend Jessica, I mean my friend um, uh, Victoria, who passed away was, was, I think she only reached 70. And Sally Palacios, 46. Edwin, I believe he was 66. I'm, I can't recall. And Paul, same. He was just over 60. And you've allowed Grandma Trini, who went home to be with you a few months ago, you allowed her to live to her 90s. And just like so many scriptures say that the, the the gray hair of our head is a crown of glory. And you've allowed Amy's grandmother to live to see her children and grandchildren, possibly even great-grandchildren, Lord. What a blessing. What a gift life is. So as her life is winding down, it's ever so painful. Would you be with Amy? Would you be with Amy's mom, with Amy's aunt, with all of the relatives? May as many people be able to come and visit her in Arizona please Jesus please may she get the best hospice and nursing care possible memory care just flutter with love and peace and angels until that moment when she breathes her last and she hears those words well done good and faithful servant those words we all are longing to hear God father I thank you for your word for your word it just stirs us up it reminds us that we need you when I read the Bible I am so reminded how I need you even as I read this morning in Psalm 42 as the deer pants for the waters so my soul longs for you and that's what I, I think I'm thirsty for you Jesus I drink your word and I want more I don't want it to ever end I just want it to be an overflowing cup and that's exactly what it is God your word your word is so awesome the logos the rema thank you for your word God thank you for the cross thank you for salvation thank you for the holy spirit thank you for being al roy the god who sees us thank you for having triumph over the grave thank you that you are so very good to us faithful long-suffering kind compassionate slow to anger and rich in love you're jehovah jireh you provide for us you're jehovah nisi your banner of love covers us your Hashem, the name above all names, or all of these things and more. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, the righteous one, we worship you, we praise you. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be born again. It doesn't seem fair. We deserve hell, but you've given us grace upon grace upon grace, overflowing grace. Thank you, God. Your mercies truly are new every morning, Father. And so this is a hard day for me, Lord, just with that lump in my throat, thinking about Jessica and Henry and Holt and Kelly and Matt and Jamie and all of the Kruger family and all the friends and family that are grieving and mourning, Father, even their neighbors, the people that live next door, their little league baseball friends. Tim did a Iron Man, all of the Iron Man friends. It's just amazing to me how our life, it's like tentacles. We spread out. We have our family, we have our friends, we have our church family, we have various people groups people that know us people from our youth from our elementary high school college age and beyond our career friends we just there's there's so many ways that our life impacts others father i want to lift up a prayer 
for mercy and, and comfort for Marlene, Doreen, Rocky, Bernadette, um, Joey, all of the Vallejo family grieving the death of, of little Robert. Father, 33 years is so young and we're so sad and we know, God, that the battle belongs to you and that you are the God of all comfort. You said, I won't leave you comfortless. I will bring you a comforter, the one that will tell you all about me. And God, I just pray for comfort. I don't even know what to pray, Father. He lived a, a, a different lifestyle. I don't, I don't know what to pray. I just pray for those that are still alive. I pray that they would question their existence. I pray they would question where little Robert is. They would think on heaven and hell and life and life choices and illness and the brevity of life, God. Your word says there's a time to be born and a time to die. So please comfort Marlene, especially her. She has to bury her son. Comfort all of his siblings, everyone that loved him and knew him, God. Please, please pour out your comfort um, just beyond beyond all I could even ask or pray pray for. Comfort my mom. She's really been grieving this loss and all the memories that come back of little Robert running around our house um, in Robindale and West Covina. Father, I just pray for Jamie especially as she is having to have this celebration of life in honor of her son. I don't know if she'll be speaking or not. Probably not. I don't know. But God, they say that Losing a child is, is just like getting amputated. You walk with a limp the rest of your life. And I just pray for Jamie. I just pray you would hold her up, God, that she would go to the scriptures for comfort, that she would live in the Psalms. She would feast on them, that you would provide a grief support bereavement group for her. I know she needs it, God. Please, please, Jesus. I pray for Vivian. I pray for Kathy and Francie and um, Sherry Tima and um, so many widows that I'm thinking of right now that have lost their husbands or have lost a loved one. Um, even Chris Huerta and my friend Shelly Huband and so many that have lost a loved one to COVID, whether it was a grandmother, a father, a, a friend, a mom's in prayer friend, a sister, uh, a sister in Christ, a brother in Christ. We've lost so many, God. And it's just hard, Lord, to live without them. You miss them. You miss them terribly. I pray for Diane and Natalie and Erica, Stephanie, and Lindsay as they're grieving. Uh, Grandma Trini's birthday was April 4th, and she would have been 97, and we just, we miss her. So comfort, comfort, Holy Spirit. Pour out your comfort. I pray against this AB22223, something like that bill, that will allow a live child, a baby that's born, to, to be murdered through alleged abortion but the child's already out of the womb i just doesn't make sense to me god i know lord that you can stop and strike bills i know that you can stop and strike laws father i think of um, john MacArthur and how he kept his church open and by your grace by your amazing handiwork the supreme court ruled in favor of um, grace fellowship thank you for that god and i pray for a similar victory for babies and for life here in california i know the colorado um abortion um, all the way up to, to birth passed in Colorado. Please, God, we don't want blood on our hands, God. Just like with Cain and Abel, you said that Abel's blood cries from the dirt. Even though Cain tried to bury him and act like nothing was wrong, you smelt that blood and you heard the weeping and you saw it all. So God, please don't allow this terrible, terrible law to pass. Please, Jesus, we're begging you. We're asking for an intervention that these lawmakers, these legislators or whomever, the people that have that power to, to pass this law, that they would not do it. Get, uh, awaken them from their sleep. May they realize how evil and how wicked such a law is, God. It's not women's rights or reproductive rights. It's murder, God. I pray also for that woman that is allegedly going to be confirmed to the Supreme Court just, Justice, the Supreme Court. Um, I forget her name, but you know all about it. Please, God, block that appointment as well, that nominee, Father. She can't even define a woman. She's not good for our Supreme Court, Father. Maybe she's done very great in her career, but she is not who our nation needs to sit on the highest court of our land. Father, your word says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. And we need forgiveness and we need healing. We need repentance. May a spirit of repentance pour out on our nation, on our country, on our state. Father, sometimes I'm embarrassed and ashamed to live in California because of the wicked 
laws that we have in this state but lord daniel lived in babylon when you lived jesus and, and were in nazareth there was wickedness moses lived among um pharaoh where they would kill they killed babies they tried to kill moses and they killed those infants so no matter where we live um geographically sin is sin so god thank you for that fresh just reminder that sin is sin whether you live in texas or indonesia or africa or alaska or idaho or utah new york um, costa rica wherever we live sin is sin so god please just pour out a spirit of revival over our nation over our country over our state over our county our cities lord we need it so bad god I, I thank you for this day. I pray you would anoint Chuck as he'll be sharing a few minutes in honor of his beautiful friend, Tim. Lord, it's going to be hard. I don't know that he can share it without crying, but hold him up. Hold up every single speaker, every preacher, everyone that's going to be sharing today. Maybe even Henry and Holt might share. Tim's sons, I don't know. Just hold up every single person that will be in attendance and that we would all walk away and say, wow. Tim was an awesome man and he served an almighty awesome God. So I thank you for this prayer time. I thank you for each and every person praying alongside with me. I pray for them, for their blessings, for their health, for their livelihood, for their finances, for their work, for their spouse's work. I pray that you would be with them, that you would bless them when they rise up, when they go to sleep, God. I pray for those that are grieving and mourning. I pray those that are feeling ill, they maybe even have a migraine right now. Would you touch their head? Would you touch their mind? Would you heal and renew all of our minds, God? I pray for Sandra, for Gwen, Glenda, my mom, Becky, Amy, uh, Margaret, um, everyone, Sandy, Shami, everyone praying with me. Alicia, I lift her up to you. Barbara, I thank you for my sister, Barbara. She's so beautiful. Every time I see her at church, she's got the biggest smile. And I just pray for her daughter's salvation, that you would draw her back. I thank you for Rich and Vanessa. They're doing so good in the photography business and just thank you for that couple they love you jesus i pray for all of the kids that aren't prodigals i pray for the non-prodigals i pray for the olivia gonzalez for the kiddos that are walking with you the christian angelos god the um the mighty men of valor ryan reese i just pray for all of the youth and the college age and the young adults that are serving you that are walking with you god that like like ryan tillman and and kristen father they are so in love with you jesus serving you worshiping you god there are so many young people in their 20s 30s 40s that are serving you and i pray for them lord we always pray for the prodigals and we won't stop adil adam pd um grace's daughter brianna god we pray for the prodigals draw them back draw them back father may they not die in their sins um annie and talisa and calvin and calvin's wife jeanette all of these people that grew up in the church and have walked away we pray for them but we also pray for those that are serving you i think of dustin harrison joe mctarsky god my beautiful sister in christ raquel perez um i think of friends that have been through stuff lord hard hard hardships the loss of a baby my friend that had a miscarriage god she's not walking away from you she's running hard after you god i pray for my clients jesus that you would hold them up lord and i just thank you with all of my heart we've covered a lot of ground in this prayer time and it is such a privilege and an honor and a blessing to just take a few moments to pray lord yes it's it's hard sometimes to pray because our mind gets distracted with the cares of the world, with the to-do lists of the world, with just not even feeling good. I remember Annie, Annie, um, oh my gosh, I can't remember her last name. They used to come to women's prayer. Um, she often had migraines and she would come to pray anyway. She would pray through those migraines. She would pray and she would pray until one day you called her home to heaven. Same with Sally Palacios, Father. I bet when she was when they took that uh, when they put her on that ventilator i bet her last breath was a prayer what a beautiful beautiful thing to pray god and so we just love you we we can't get enough of you jesus and that's because you loved us first in jesus precious name amen